My first guest, there's many voices on The Simpsons. He's also appeared in numerous films, including The Birdcage and Along Came Polly. Beginning this Sunday, you can see him in the new Showtime series, Huff. Please welcome Hank Azaria. Good to have you here on the show. Nice to be here. Yeah, okay. it's nice to see you. Every now and then you come by on the show, and we, of course, years ago used to work together on The Simpsons. Yes. Uh, and in the in the olden times, and uh, you know, it's funny. I want to ask you about this because I never got to talk to you uh, when we worked together. I was, you know, I creeped you out, I think. And uh, <laughs> but the you voice, were aloof. yeah, I was aloof and strange. The 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 voices on The Simpsons. I want to ask you. I know where some of the voices come from, where you've sort of borrowed from or taken inspiration from. Mo the bartender, yeah, which is the voice that you do. I never knew where Mo the bartender came from. Uh, Mo who talks like this. Yeah. Uh, it's not funny. Yeah. It's the way the man talks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and by the way, my favorite my favorite part on the on the Simpsons was when Bart would call and do prank phone calls. Yeah, and like uh, and and she would humiliate him, and he would get so mad and pull out a knife. Like he's gonna, <laughs> this is the best part. How else could you possibly respond? To that? <laughs> Except with murderous, murderous rage. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it was like, I want to kiss a man. I want to kiss a man. <laughs> I, I, we had an alcoholic. Yeah. And, uh, I want a man. I want, I'm Amanda Hug and Kiss. Uh, yeah, Amanda Hug and Kiss. I'm yeah. looking for Amanda Hug and Kiss. Yes. Was that yours? Did you write that one? I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, it's long been a dream of mine, but no, that was not mine. Uh, <laughs> but where did, where did the voice come from? Well, I, that's the first voice I actually did on The Simpsons. And I was doing a play. Uh, mo most of the, the voices I do are just very bad celebrity impressions, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was doing a play in Hollywood at the time, and I was doing a bad Pacino from Dog Day Afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now he's like, he talked like, I'm dying here. Yeah. Everybody's coming down on me. <laughs> so I auditioned with that, and they said, well, we want it to be more gravelly than that. Right. So if you make that gravelly, you get more to bartender. Wow, that's so... I see yeah. it now that you explain it, but I... Now hold on. Very simple math. Yeah. Apu, is Apu based on anyone in particular? Or? He is based on every 7-Eleven guy in the world. <laughs> every man, when, I, when I first moved to L.A., I didn't have a car. I could walk to the 7-Eleven, which is what I did every day. And he would, no matter how many times I was there, and I'd, I'd buy a drink, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, an iced tea or something, right. and I'd take a sip before I'd be like, you didn't pay for that yet. <laughs> like, where are we going to go? Now, you said, you said that a lot of the voices that you do are based on bad celebrity impressions. Chief Wiggum. Well, this is Chief Wiggum. Who do you think he sounds right, like? Right, right. Like the little it's, quiz. Yeah, Edward G. Robinson. That's exactly correct. Right, right. A very bad Edward G. Robinson. Now, what about... I know you do Lou the Cop. Yeah, Lou the Cop. This is yeah. Lou the Cop. <laughs> Who does Lou the Cop See, this like? is funny, because I didn't... I, I should know this, and I've listened to Lou the Cop all the time, but it never occurred to me that it's Sylvester Stallone. It's Sylvester Stallone. That's yeah. right. That's right. And <laughs> is the... <laughs> The, the comic book guy, the, the fat comic book guy, uh, is he is he based on a... He's not based on a celebrity, is he? No, he talks like this, the fat comic book guy. And... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for applauding the nonsense that comes out of the front part of my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's actually based on the guy I went to college with. Who uh, lived next door freshman year, uh -huh. and his name was F. I never learned the rest of his name, just F. Right. And he would, the big, big fat guy, and he, the room was about this big, the dorm room, and he sat in a big Barca lounger. Mm -hmm. And if you did anything that annoyed, if you did anything that annoyed him, this is actually true. He would say, "Get out! You are on my list." <laughs> and he had a list. He had a list and a little memo board outside. Yeah, and yeah, be I, I, I'm sure he did. Zeria. Yeah. Why and did the, everybody who went to college have someone like that who lived next door? Everybody has one of those in uh, one form or another. I don't know. He was a very strange man. Yeah. And I wonder where he is. And yet, it was a good list, too. If you did good things to him, you're on the good list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should find him and have him on the show. Uh, <laughs> if you could guess. You've done a lot of movie work. Your first big movie I, it was The Birdcage. Big, high-profile role, is that fair to say? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and we, I think we have a still uh, I from that movie to refresh people's memory. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, And I'm kind of hot. You are very hot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
How did now tell me about that? Because did you have any? A lot of people who, uh, who don't think about celebrities having families or relatives. And when I do embarrassing, inane things on the show, I actually have to go and see my, my family later on. Uh, yeah. and, and it can be a little tough. How did your family react, like your dad, your mom, to, to you playing that role? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's rough, actually. Um, my father, uh, I tried to warn him. I was like, you know, he was excited. It's the first big movie role. Right. I'm like, Dad, I'm telling you, it's, it's a little out there. I don't know. <laughs> And uh, as you see, I was, you know, in a bra and wig. And oh, I saw that. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm looking for a man to hug and kiss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, um, he came by the set, and uh, I wasn't in drag that day, but we had a Polaroid that the makeup people had, and, mm -hmm. and I showed it to him. It was a picture of something like that. And right. he, he stared at it for a long time like that, and then he uh, handed it back to me, and he just said, uh, this isn't you. But he didn't say it like, oh, come on, this isn't you. He's like, this is not you. Like, I <laughs> don't tell anyone that's you, and also I can't live in a world where that is so, you. So that's, a, that's, an ins that's, that's an impressive amount of denial. Like, no, this is just not you. No, yeah, really, seriously, it was that, it's exactly what he was when This is not you. Right, right. Anyway. And you, uh, you, you, you I'm gonna, there's no other way to say it, but you bare your ass in that movie, do you not? I do, yes, yeah. I do. How some, did that go over? Uh, at the, you know, I sat at the premiere, actually, with my mom and dad, and that moment came up, and mm -hmm. my mother turned to, honestly, one of the, the most powerful agents in Hollywood, a guy named Kevin Uvain, and uh, she said really loud, I diapered that derriere. <laughs> <laughs> and what celebrity is that voice based on? <laughs> <laughs> That's just my mom. That's just my mom. Yeah. Uh, well, you have the show Huff, which is uh, premiering this Sunday night, and uh, you play a shrink in Huff. Yeah. And uh, did you see, ever see a shrink? I know that's a very personal question, but, uh, you know, I think we, we've all at one point or another needed help. Have you... I'm in almost a constant state of seeing a shrink. There's, right. I think he's backstage ready to catch me as soon as I get off here. Yeah, and what, what's he like? He's Understanding? Actually, he's, uh, I've seen this guy on and off for like 15 years in L.A. Uh, good old Phil Stutz. Hi, Phil. And uh, he, he's, uh, he's a very tough guy. He's from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually sounds a lot like Mickey Rourke. Uh, the old Mickey Rourke, the old, uh, like, Popa Greenwich Village. Popa Greenwich Mickey. Village, right. Yeah. And uh, one of the first times I went to see him a long time ago, I was whining about a lot of problems for about 20 minutes. And this is absolutely true. This is what he said to me. He went, uh, uh, yeah, right, shut the f up. <laughs> I swear to God. And I said, what? Uh, what? <laughs> And he said, uh, yeah, your problem is you're a f baby. <laughs> All the stuff you're whining about. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Well, that's, uh, now we have even more editing to do. Thank you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that, that's what the man said. As if there wasn't that's enough. That's what's funny yeah. about doing a show on Showtime. You yeah, can, yeah, you yeah. You curse your head off. Yeah, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll get there. Well, Huff premieres this Sunday night. <laughs> Promote the show, Colin. At 10 on Showtime. So watch that show. Hank, always great to see you again. Thank you very much. Tommy Lee is coming up. Stick around. We'll be right back.